Hello guys, how are you doing? Hello, everything is fine, thank you. Cool. Okay, so uh, recalling our last uh, topic, we discussed in details the uh, um, characteristics of uh, RC electric chains and electric circuits. Uh, so if we have some capacitors added to DC um, electric circuits, then uh, we deal with some time dependent DC, like direct current, uh, because we need to charge a capacitor. If we uh, at the beginning uh, had discharge capacitor, so it takes some time to charge capacitor, um, electric current goes from its maximum current to uh, minimum, which is zero uh, during the uh, time which is required um, to charge fully charged uh, capacitor uh, to the same potential difference as the electromotive force. And this time is defined by the uh, product of uh, capacitance of the capacitor and resistance of uh, resistor connected in series to the capacitor. Uh, <clears throat> this product is called uh, time constant of this RC chain and uh, uh, defines how fast uh, such uh, electric circuit can respond to external um, uh, signals like when we apply some uh, DC uh, voltage uh, how fast we can charge or discharge um, capacitor because if already we have a charge capacitor electric current is equal to zero because capacitor is considered as the open circuit. Um, we have some dielectric in between two plates of the capacitor. And uh, then once we unplug the power supply and uh, connect the resistor directly to the terminals of the uh, capacitor, uh, we have the opposite process. So we have a uh, large current at the beginning also, but this is like discharging current. And then it uh, rapidly, like exponentially decreases to zero, uh, which is uh, corresponding to the um, case uh, when electric uh, capacitor is already uh, fully discharged. Okay, uh, so with that part, we kind of finished um, the section of ele electrical uh, uh, DC current. And uh, uh, now we move to the new topic, uh, which is magnetic uh, field and magnetic properties. Uh, so magnetic field is another form of matter which exists around uh, electric charges, but the requirement as opposite to electric field. So we know that electric field um, always exists ar around in the environment around electric charges. Um, it doesn't matter if they are stationary or they're moving. So magnetic field, it's a special form of uh, matter uh, which exists only around moving electric charges. And uh, uh, initially it's like since dawn of history, um, humans knew some properties of permanent magnets, um, which uh, like some stones which uh, possess some magnetic uh, properties and they could uh, either be attracted to each other or uh, repel. And uh, um, uh, this feature was actually used for centuries in as a compass. So compass represents by itself 
some permanent magnet in the form of a needle, which can freely rotate um, uh, in the horizontal plane. And that allows to interact with the magnetic field of uh, our planet Earth and uh, <clears throat> be aligned according to its uh, like locations of the north and south poles uh, <clears throat> of the Earth. And that was definitely a very useful uh, uh, tool and still uh, used um, for defining uh, orientations on different uh, areas. <clears throat> uh, As for, um, so it was experimentally shown that uh, magnetic, like magnets, permanent magnets can interact with the pulses, uh, poles, uh, and uh, uh, those, uh, so historically they are called north and south poles of the magnets, and uh, depends on the orientation if they match or these are different types of poles um, magnets tend to uh, exert on each other uh, attractive or uh, repulsive forces and uh, the magnitude of this magnetic force um, is uh, reversally proportional to the distance between uh, the magnets so it actually quite similar to electric charges and electric force. Uh, however, there is uh, one, there are a bunch of uh, fundamental differences which we will um, discuss uh, during this lecture. Uh, but um, the first one which should be uh, highlighted is the fact that we cannot separate um, magnetic pole um, by itself, like alone. We can do this with electric charge. Um, so we can have separately positive and negative charges. Uh, however, it doesn't matter how much we will um, split the uh, permanent magnet. It will also on both sides have uh, two different poles, uh, magnetic poles. Uh, <clears throat> so probably let me switch the camera. And uh, let's show some magnet. So we have some north and south pole. So um, the representation of magnetic field and defining its properties is uh, used by this vector B of so-called inductance of magnetic field. And uh, uh, we need to remember that magnetic fields kind of originate uh, at north uh, pole and terminate on the south pole. And uh, uh, yeah, also probably keep in mind that the orientation of magnetic um, uh, poles is opposite to the orientation of uh, geographic uh, poles of uh, our planet Earth. So if we switch to this slide. Oops. Uh, so you can see that the South Pole actually located quite close to the uh, north geographic pole of the planet Earth. And uh, in the contrary, we have south uh, geographic pole next to north magnetic pole. And here at the north uh, magnetic pole, uh, these lines of magnetic field are originated and they terminate on the uh, like in the area of the south magnetic pole. It's actually a serious question uh, why exactly uh, and what is uh, true mechanism of uh, the 
Earth's magnetic field. So why do we have this magnetic field around on the planet? Because um, it's necessary to underline that not every planet possess um, magnetic field and um, we will discuss this a bit more in uh, details later, um, but uh, it definitely plays a very substantial role for the uh, existence of life uh, on our planet. And uh, uh, initially it was a consideration that probably uh, since we have a lot of iron in the core of the uh, of our planet um, was considered okay that could be that we have some uh, kind of permanent magnet inside uh, our planet uh, because of uh, this magnetic metal uh, dominance uh, in that interior um, region however the temperatures are extremely high in the center of uh, our planet and that's why uh, it would not be possible to maintain some <clears throat> uh, dominant uh, orientation of uh, these magnetic uh, features uh, inside at such high temperatures and that's why uh, currently the most uh, reasonable model for uh, existence of magnetic field around our planet is uh, so-called convection currents uh, when we have some ionized matter of uh, um, uh, magma of like melted uh, matter in the core of our planet because of uh, convection uh, movements uh, this creates certain uh, electric currents like planetary size uh, magnetic currents, which uh, consequently generate magnetic field around the uh, Earth. Uh, and uh, that is the working model for nowadays. Uh, by the way, if someone um, haven't seen this movie, there is a movie named The Core, uh, some fa fantasy, but uh, quite interesting movie about uh, some issues of magnetic field around planet Earth and there was some mission to um, and that was the reason because uh, this convection uh, circulation of the core material because of unknown reasons just tend to stop and there was a mission to ignite these convection processes uh, again, so uh, of course, kind of very fictionary approach. However, it at some points highlights this uh, origins of uh, uh, scientifically accepted uh, origins of uh, magnetic field around our planet. So uh, let me change now again back to our slide. Uh, how do I do this? Hmm. Stop share. Okay. Good. So now we were talking that, okay, we describe this magnetic field with certain vector. It's a vector field. Uh, so uh, at each point in the space around moving uh, charges, we have some. Uh, Uh, we have some certain um, characteristics of this magnetic field and we need to define them quantitatively. <clears throat> so uh, in order to define quantitatively at any place in the space, like any location in the space like around magnet or around some wire with a current, uh, we need to uh, consider some quantitative parameter which is actually magnetic force so we have some magnetic uh, force or maybe let's mark it FFB and uh, that is uh, some function of uh, the magnetic field itself in this point and the uh, 
electric uh, charge of the, let's say some test uh, electric charge uh, in this uh, point of magnetic field. And uh, velocity vector. So uh, now we, after carrying out some uh, experiments, and uh, also would be uh, good to mention that uh, it was shown uh, that there is some relationship between electric current and magnetic field quite recently. It was um, something 18th, 19 or 18th, 18th 20s. Um, just occasionally was noticed that uh, when we have some electric current flowing through a, a wire, um, it has certain effect on the orientation of um, the compass needle. So, uh experimental measurements revealed that uh, this magnetic force is proportional to the uh, electric charge and the uh, speed. Uh, however, it really depends on the orientation. So if uh, magnetic field lines are parallel to the uh, velocity vector, um, magnetic uh, force is equal to zero. And uh, if uh, there is certain angle between, so if this magnetic field lines are not parallel to the velocity vector, um, then uh, magnetic force is proportional to sinus uh, alpha, which is the angle between these two vectors of uh, magnetic field uh, and uh, velocity vector. So according to set, like analyzing this set of parameters, we can um, already um, see that uh, magnetic force um, is uh, defined by the uh, vector product of uh, velocity vector and uh, magnetic field vector. So uh, by defining this magnetic uh, force, we can quantify um, magnetic field in any point. And uh, it is necessary to highlight the, uh, some features of um, this vector product. So we have some positive charge, let's say. Um, this is important. We need to keep in mind which um, charge, um, positive or negative, we are dealing with because here we have this Q and this is actually, this takes into account the sign. So for positive, we have obviously plus, negative minus. So if we have some positive charge and some velocity vector and our magnetic field oriented like this, then we can use the rule of uh, left palm. So if we align our uh, four fingers in the direction of the velocity vector and magnet magnetic field uh, vector will uh, go into our palm, uh, then the uh, sum which is standing on, at the right angle to the other figures, uh, fingers uh, will show us the uh, orientation of the magnetic uh, force. And uh, uh, as I mentioned before, it should be taken into account the sign. So let's say if we have some magnetic field and two charges, let's say we have uh, minus and uh, here we have some plus. They both moving kind of upwards. So in this case, um, for positive charge, we will have magnetic force acting uh, this direction. 
and for negative charge, since we have this minus uh, for electric charge, we need to consider um, opposite uh, orientation of the velocity vector, which will go in this case uh, downwards. Uh, and uh, uh, then when, when we kind of consider this flipped uh, velocity vector, we can uh, show that the magnetic force will be oriented in uh, opposite direction for uh, electric uh, negative charge uh, in comparison to the positive charge, regardless that both these uh, charges are uh, moving and their velocity vectors are aligned in the same um, directions. So according to the, like, the magnitude of this uh, force will be uh, absolute value of electric charge times uh, speed times uh, magnetic inductance uh, times sinus alpha. So this is, uh, sorry, is it here we don't have vector, it's just absolute value. So just FB. Okay, so once we have this, go to another slide. And uh, uh, need to highlight some differences between uh, electric uh, field and magnetic field. So first of all, um, electric uh, force is parallel to the uh, electric field lines. So electric force, electric is parallel to the actual electric field. However, for the magnetic field, uh, magnetic force is perpendicular to the magnetic field lines. So this is very fundamental difference. Um, and uh, that will really define the effect what uh, magnetic uh, force has on the uh, moving uh, charges. So based on this, we can already claim that uh, for electric field, the displacement vector when it moves along the some electric field uh, and the force, electric uh, force, they are in the same direction and definitely electric force can perform some, some work. Uh, however, uh, this is not true for magnetic field because uh, let's say if we have some velocity vector, uh, depends on, of course, on magnetic field, but uh, doesn't matter where magnetic field is, uh, how magnetic field is oriented. Um, magnetic force is always perpendicular to the uh, velocity vector means uh, it always perpendicular to the displacement. And we remember from the previous course, like physics one, that uh, if we have some uh, force perpendicular to the displacement, um, projection of this force on the direction of the displacement is zero and work done by this force is equal to zero. So uh, the, um, consequence of this fact is that uh, electric field can change both the direction of the uh, velocity vector and its magnitude. So it means with electric field, by performing some work, uh, we can increase kinetic energy uh, increased kinetic energy of electric charges and 
change simultaneously direction and magnitude of velocity vector. However, in the case of magnetic field, uh, since it's always orientated perpendicular to the uh, displacement, we can only change the orientation. Uh, like, sorry, I mean orientation of the velocity vector and um, we cannot change the magnitude. So since we this uh, uh, magnetic force doesn't perform any work, means that we cannot neither stop nor accelerate electric charges only um, uh, provide, uh, so there is no mechanism to uh, change the magnitude of electric, uh, of uh, the velocity vector as it done by electric field. And that is actually uh, found uh, some applications. Uh, electric field usually, I mean, it's always used to um, change kinetic energy of particles to accelerate them. Uh, and uh, uh, sometimes also electric field is used to change the vector of orientation of the velocity vector. However, uh, it is more convenient to do with magnetic field. And that's why, uh, for instance, if you uh, still remember some uh, electron beam uh, monitors and TVs, uh, there we had uh, some cathode as a source of electrons. Uh, which were accelerated with high voltage. And uh, around this channel uh, where um, the uh, electrons were accelerated, uh, there were a lot of uh, wires like coils. And uh, those are uh, some magnetic coils in different directions. So they could uh, control the position of this electron beam by deflecting it uh, via this magnetic uh, force. Uh, so usually such tandem system is used to, um, electric field is used to accelerate charges, magnetic field is used to um, align them. For instance, also uh, for uh, deposition processes uh, in vacuum. There are different deposition techniques and one of them is electron beam evaporation technique. Um, so in this case, we also have a cathode and some accelerating uh, voltage, which in that case about 12 kilo, uh, uh, kilo volts, 12,000 volts. And um, we need to focus this beam so it hits like certain point on the material um, in order to increase its temperature and melt uh, this material for evaporation. And also we need some uh, positioning so it doesn't hit some copper crucible or some other part of the vacuum chamber. So it really uh, focused and oriented on the surface of the material to be evaporated. And that is realized by a system of magnetic coils, um, also uh, quite important component. Um, and this technique allows to deposit very um, pure materials because we don't heat the crucible like in thermal evaporation. In that case, we run electric currents through uh, tungsten crucible uh, and uh, by uh, this Joule heat, we melt and evaporate material which is located in this uh, crucible. But uh, this could cause, since the crucible is at highest temperature, it could cause some um, interaction with uh, chemical reactions with the material and crucible, and then uh, the purity of the deposited uh, film will not be as high. And with electron beam, it's possible to focus with magnetic field uh, uh, very small spot on the surface of material, melt it locally, and this melted area will be uh, located, uh, like constrained with um, the material itself. And then we don't have any contact with uh, uh, hot uh, walls of uh, crucible made from other material. And that's why there are no contaminations. So certain uh, features can be very beneficial for these applications. And uh, also we can evaporate very uh, like materials with very high uh, melting temperature uh, with electron beam technique. So we uh, define what is 
like magnetic field uh, lines and uh, we know how to quantify it via the magnetic field force in each uh, point uh, with some test si uh, test electric charge. Uh, so now we um, need to mention about units. So uh, this magnetic field in uh, this universal uh, international uh, unit systems, it's uh, newtons per coulomb times meter per second. And uh, uh, so it's units of magnetic field. And this is agreed to call Tesla. T. Uh, so it's not in the honor, honor of uh, the name of this US company making electric cars. So it was actually company name later uh, than the unit for magnetic field. Uh, but probably more people know this word because of that company, not because of features of magnetic field. Uh, and uh, uh, also since uh, Coulomb per second is electric current, so we can also write that units of uh, Tesla, uh, so sorry, units of magnetic field, Tesla, and this corresponds also to Newton ampere times per ampere times meter. So now let us consider a, a motion of uh, electric uh, charge, the electric particle uh, in uniform magnetic field. So for this uh, purpose, we first need to agree how we uh, define orientation of magnetic field in the plane of our image. So if we have some dots, so this shows us that we have a magnetic field kind of going in the plane uh, of our uh, figure. And uh, if we have such crosses, sorry, this is not in, this is in. So this for crosses, this magnetic field is uh, going in the plane of our figure and dots show that it's uh, going out from the uh, plane of our uh, figure. And uh, uh, since we already defined this and agreed on this fact, now we can consider some um, case of uh, moving uh, charges in magnetic field. So let us consider a system where we have a magnetic field oriented in uh, the plane of our uh, figure, then we have some uh, positive charge, which is moving with some velocity vector. And because of the magnetic uh, field, which in this case, uh, we again remember, so it's positive vector. We align our lines, uh, our, our four fingers along this uh, vector, uh, velocity vector. Then uh, we uh, keep in mind that magnetic field uh, vector should go in our palm and the uh, uh, straight sum will show us the direction of the uh, magnetic uh, force. So it will be this direction. So this is our magnetic force. Because of this uh, force, we consider the circular motion, uh, with some radius r. So if, for instance, we have uh, this charge already here, its velocity vector is in this direction. 
then magnetic force will be again um, oriented to the center of this uh, circle. And uh, we know that the magnitude of this magnetic force is equal to electric positive electric charge times uh, speed times magnetic field, uh, strength of magnetic field. And uh, we also can write that this uh, magnetic force is compensated by uh, centrifugal force in order to keep the uh, electric charge on stationary circular um, trajectory. So we will have mass of this particle uh, times uh, some centri uh, centripetal uh, acceleration. And uh, in this case, we can write that Q times V times B is equal uh, M times V square divided by R. So this V squared divided by R is our centripetal uh, acceleration. And uh, we can then proceed further with uh, this equation and calculate this uh, radius of the uh, circular uh, trajectory. So it will be M times V divided by Q times B. So we see that um, this uh, radius is proportional to the linear momentum of the uh, charge particle and also reversely proportional to the electric charge and uh, magnetic uh, field. So means that we have, if for instance, we have the same particle with like fixed uh, uh, speed, uh, we uh, will reduce this radius uh, if these particles are moving in a stronger magnetic field. So this, we can also, based on, on this uh, equation, uh, which actually defines the second law of motion, like second Newton's law. Uh, we can also uh, come up with the equation for calculating angular velocity. It will be linear velocity divided by radius. And in our case, it will be charge times B divided by M. Uh, so it shows uh, angular velocity and also uh, time period for the uh, one uh, circular motion when it moves three, 360 degrees, uh, makes one rotation on this uh, circular uh, trajectory. So it will be two pi times R divided by V and this will be two pi divided by omaha or two pi times M divided by Q B. So this angular uh, velocity omaha is called uh, cyclotron frequency and uh, This is actually a very important parameter because um, can use this cycl cyclotron uh, frequency can use to uh, measure effective mass of electrons or holes like positively charged uh, uh, particles which are considered in semiconductors as absence of electron um, from measuring uh, absorption of such material placed in magnetic field um, in long wavelength region. So usually this frequency 
uh, is in the IR region, infrared region. And if we place um, conductive material, let's for instance, some uh, metal um, in strong magnetic field, uh, it can uh, change the uh, infrared light, which uh, passing through this uh, sample or is reflected from the surface uh, because of interaction of the infrared uh, electromagnetic forces, uh, electromagnetic uh, fields with the this uh, uh, electric charges moving in these uh, uh, circles um, in the inside the material. So because of this interaction. Um, it's possible to see certain absorption uh, peaks uh, corresponding to the uh, like cyclotron resonance, so-called, uh, when frequency coincide of the electromagnetic field um, and uh, the frequency of electric charge moving uh, on these circular uh, uh, trajectories inside the material and uh, we can then later calculate uh, this effective mass. So if we want, we, if we know uh, angular velocity, we know magnetic field, so an electric charge, obviously. Uh, so we can calculate the uh, effective mass. So it's different from a mass of free electron inside the metal or some semiconductor. Uh, because of the effect of crystalline lattice on the way, like some periodic potential of crystalline lattice on the way how uh, charges uh, are moving in this uh, material. So there is so-called effective mass and this effective mass can be um, determined by uh, applying this feature of uh, moving uh, electric uh, charges in external uh, uniform magnetic field. So uh, let me change the screen. Oops. Okay, so if uh, we have uh, some component, uh, if we consider this in three dimensional, uh, system of coordinates. And uh, uh, what we considered before that we have a uh, velocity vector oriented in the plane of our uh, image. However, if there is non-zero component uh, perpendicular to the plane of the image, then um, these uh, charges in external uh, uniform magnetic field, they will move uh, along some helix. So it's still moving uh, uh, along circular uh, trajectory. So if we project this helix on XZ plane, uh, like here, uh, sorry, there's a, a YZ plane, uh, then we will see some circle, but uh, obviously we have three dimensional case and there is some non-zero component, uh, velocity component on uh, axis, uh, along axis X. And that's why uh, it's not just moving along the circular trajectory, but it moving along some helix trajectory. Uh, so uh, that's actually um, also happening in some non-uniform electric field, but because of um, some features, which we will discuss um, a bit later, uh, we have not uniform electric magnetic field. That's why we have non uh, constant uh, synchrotron uh, frequency, like angular velocity. And uh, that will uh, help to kind of trap moving electric charge in between uh, these uh, strong uh, areas of strong magnetic fields. So it will move from one end to another and uh, backwards. Uh, that is used to uh, fix very hot ionized uh, gas, which is called plasma, uh, and keep it from the contact with uh, the walls of the vacuum chamber. So it doesn't uh, melt the 
uh, vacuum chamber and um, allows to uh, conduct certain experiments with this hot plasma. Um, and coming back to the like, magnetic field of our planet, I mentioned that it plays a major role uh, for existence of life on our planet. And it's indeed uh, true because um, there is so-called solar wind, which it represents mostly with uh, high energetic uh, protons and uh, electrons, uh, which like flow from the surface, like extremely hot surface of the sun with about 6,000 degrees uh, in the direction of, like in all directions. And obviously part of it reaches our planet. So as it's kind of a very uh, high energetic particles, like it's actually radiation. Um, and uh, without magnetic field, our atmosphere would be just blown away and the surface would be uh, irradiated with high energy particles. So definitely not the most favorable conditions for um, development of life. However, the presence of magnetic field, we know that uh, this in three dimensional case in general, these uh, uh, electric charges move on, like follow some helix trajectory along the uh, magnetic field lines. And that helps to stop them on the way to the planet. And they just move along these helix uh, trajectories uh, along lines of magnetic field around the planet. Uh, and then uh, there is some highest concentration of um, magnetic uh, field next to the uh, poles. Uh, so uh, they interact the highest concentration of these uh, particles in those areas. And that's why we um, observe in uh, high altitudes, um, so-called aurora, which is uh, uh, lights in the sky uh, because of ionizing this this wind particle, solar wind particles, they ionize uh, upper layers of atmosphere in uh, next to these regions. And uh, because of recombination, uh, some reverse process of ionization when uh, kicked out electrons come back uh, to atoms of uh, nitrogen and oxygen, uh, they start to emit uh, light and that's what actually we see uh, such changing patterns of um, weak light um, in the sky, uh, which uh, depends on the like variation of magnetic field and interaction with the uh, solar wind. So this is really very important mechanism for uh, allowing some protective some protective mechanism for our planet and uh, uh, conditions of uh, magnetic field around uh, planet earth uh, <clears throat> can be impacted by very strong uh, eruptions of uh, this uh, solar wind particles so called protuberance um, on the surface of the sun and uh, very intense flow of this uh, solar wind particles can disturb uh, magnetic field uh, lines distribution along the uh, around the uh, in planet Earth and um, uh, cause quite uh, big problems for the electric power grid and electronic operation, uh, which can damage uh, electric power system for for quite a long time. Specifically, satellites are quite vulnerable to these um, effects. And that's why there are certain uh, international uh, satellite missions, which uh, specifically monitor conditions of uh, solar wind and uh, Earth's magnetic field in order to see uh, and uh, be ready for uh, events, some unpredicted events uh, like this. 
Okay, guys. I think that this is pretty much everything what we uh, were planning to discuss for today. Uh, so we introduced the magnetic field um, and uh, describe uh, some key characteristics of magnetic field uh, in terms of electric, uh, sorry, magnetic force at some points in space around um, uh, the source of magnetic field and um, <clears throat> considered quantitatively described the motion of uh, charged particles in uniform magnetic field. So for uh, Wednesday, we will continue studying uh, magnetic field and we will deal more with the uh, magnetic field created uh, next to uh, conductors with some electric current. Uh, so that will be our next topic. Uh, thank you very much for attention. And you're welcome to have any questions. Uh, yes, I have a question. Why do magnetic field lines go from north to south? Mm -hmm. So um, it's kind of definition for... Uh, further calculations so we agreed with the orientation of uh, uh, these magnetic field lines it's like similar we agree with the orientation of uh, electric field lines when we have uh, electric field lines originated on uh, positive charges and terminate on uh, negative uh, also the definition of the direction of current when we assume that direction of current is the uh, direction of uh, movement of positive uh, electric charge. So we need to define certain system and kind of internationally agree on this uh, and uh, then deal, yeah, use it for uh, all uh, mathematical uh, apparatus which is applied to describe quantity these effects. Okay. Any more questions? No, thank you. Goodbye. Okay, guys. Thank you for attention. Have a good uh, evening and see you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.